All right, I think this is probably just going to be a, a test video. So I, I think I mentioned I wanted to play the Masurian Lake scenario for um, 1914 East Prussia, The World Undone by Conflict uh, Simulations Limited. One of the very first games I p played when I got into Hex Encounter. This is a, um, I also purchased the print and play version and uh, made my, uh, made my own custom bits. This is why it's giant sized. All right, so I've mentioned uh, the situation before, but we'll go through it again. So historically right now is uh, basically the Germans have wiped out the, um, the Russian uh, second army. They want to get rid of the first uh, Russian first army that's still uh, lingering around here. Um, up here with um, Rennenkamp and it's um, not winter time that's the I think the second Masurian Lakes game they've so I'll go, I'll go through a little couple of specifics like I said I think this will be a test video so here's the victory conditions there as far as I'm concerned I've played this game about this scenario maybe uh, 12 or 13 times. I think I've won with the Germans maybe twice. Uh, it's just due to the fact it's, like I said, I think you have to be in a very adept um, player at uh, uh, these rules to win. Nobody's getting reinforcements. You see what you see and that's what you're getting. The victory conditions essentially is this. As long as the Russians can keep a single, remember that, it's crazy, one single unit on that side of the border for seven turns, they win. That's all I gotta say. There's a lot of bad terrain and a lot of uh, zone of control issues with this game. If the Russians play it, Maybe people don't find this exciting because you're like uh, on the back foot, but you're not really. At least I've not not the way I play it. I certainly take a look at my uh, fallback options, obviously, because the Germans have overwhelming strength points, like in concentration, and the Germans are the only ones able to use the rail. Uh, that's one thing right off the bat. I'm just going to say for the Russians, I've played this, like I said, repeatedly. I love playing the Russians. The Germans, it's tough. Uh, maybe I should not focus so much on the Russians and start focusing more on the Germans. For me, the, the Russians do simple things. Um, you cut as much rail as humanly possible. Uh, just due to the fact that if the Germans are able to start outflanking you because it's unlimited movement essentially, it costs one movement point to get on and off, whatever. You can move like crazy. It's nuts. So you have to, I have to be very careful for the Russians. Um, secondly, like I said, they've got some pretty wicked strength points uh, sitting up here. I can't, um, I can't deal with them like... In certain areas I can. So I've written down my usual strategies I do with the um, uh, Russians which I'm going to try to do. One, you hunker down in Goldap and I've got to figure this uh, woods, I think it's a famous woods, but basically I'm going to stay here, stay put. You're going to see the train effects later on and so on and so forth, but I'm going to bring these guys as quickly as possible here. Um, then also um, Renan Camp at the headquarters and, and some artillery here. I'm also just going to stay um, near uh, Insterberg and get behind the river and yet again use the woods. Good luck to you. I'm, I haven't done it before. Well, I actually usually um, send some of my troops this way to um, cause some grief with the garrison, the German garrisons. It's a slowdown tactic. I'm not going to stay there for long. Trust me, man. But I'm wondering if I could start as I fall back. I'll cut, uh, cut rail like a lunatic. I have to take a look and make sure that I think I have to spend a movement point or something, which sucks. But this is the weirdo thing about this game is as long as I don't uh, perform a combat in the first round, I can move the same number of movement points the second round and perform a combat. 
there's so, like I said, there's these interesting little layers that are going on uh, with this game. Um, remember, it was based on the SPI game, the Marin. So if you've got that, um, off you go, man. So that's it for the Russians. Like I said, um, oh, no, no, not really. And then I'm also going to use the delaying action. There's a fair amount of strength points sitting here. And what I try to do is either uh, see, gauge, remember, uh, the Russians get the first turn. I usually try to um, cause a bit of grief. Like, uh, I call it a delaying action because I'm going to fall back towards the river and the swamps. But I basically try to punch them in the nose a little bit, uh, essentially. Like, I'm not, like, yeah, I've got, like, a lot of stuff. As I fall back, I try to see if there's, like, a little bit of a slip up on the German side. Uh, so, yeah, I use the delay in action. I put up some resistance near uh, Nordenburg uh, using the swamp and the river. And then along with, um, where's, uh, 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 Angerberg, what a strange name, and Dark Darkenman to fall back to. Um, then I said, like I said, I, I was wondering about that. I, I'll, I'll try to remember that again. As the Germans, um, it's essentially, you don't have many turns. I think there's only like se uh, seven, nine turns or so. It's not good. Hold on. So it's, if things go bad die roll wise and poor, it's almost like chess for the Germans. Everything has to go um, hold on here, I'll see if I can find it. And yeah, and this German cavalry, uh, after turn 20, it's not too long, uh, the Germans get to roll. Essentially that uh, cavalry was sitting there to make sure the second army, Russian second army, didn't try to outflank um, uh, the, uh, the Russian 8th over here. But um, they don't have to worry about it, but he's still, like, you know, maybe command and control issues or something. Um, where are you? What was I looking up? I cannot remember. I got my mind's going a mile a minute, man. I have no. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, no amount of turns. That's right. Jeepers jumping, mother of God. Starting with the second. Yeah, that's that's when he can do the second round of turn twenty. He can start rolling to see if he can release the hounds here, the cavalry hounds. So the game starts on turn nineteen for the Russians. And ends on turn 26. That's insane. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight turns. Oh my god. Good luck to you, Germany. That's all I gotta say. I would, and I've said this before, time and time again. Like, we'll go, we'll get into the minutiae later because I'm gonna go and uh, read the rules uh, just to make sure that I've got them down again. Like, if you've got, uh, you know, multiple. Uh, enemy units and you're adjacent to you. You have to try to make attacks that way. You, you, you have to stop in enemy zones of control. Rivers do not, you cannot, you do not exert your um, enemy zone of control across a river. That's extremely important. I'll tell you that much. It, like it'll give you a defensive bonus, but be careful. Um, yeah, there's some stacking. Really good stacking uh, in combination with headquarters and um, artillery. Headquarters are not very effective here, so I'd like to um, morph that someday with maybe a bit of uh, line of communication or supply. That's about it. Like I said, right now it's the Russians' first turn. <laughs> They're going to fall back like a maniac in some spots. Um, not ever. I'm just going to do my normal whatevers, and then I'll see how the Germans respond. That's it. And, uh, oh, good game, good game.